Hello. Welcome back, my dear students of leadership. Uh, it's good to be here. I'm doing something different. I'm going to be experimenting with different ways to uh, create and capture value in this online environment. And I thought what I'd do is make videos uh, to uh, contain lectures uh, ahead of time. That way I can um, do them over again if I forget to say something or uh, down the road, I've, I've purchased some software that will enable me to edit them and try to make them more interesting for you. Uh, let me start off by, of course, apologizing for what happened last time. Uh, I'm just about uh, emotionally composed from that. It really upset me, and I've made uh, many changes. I've upgraded to a 200 MPS um, Wi-Fi connection. I've got um, another device I will connect uh, during class. And then I will also connect on my phone. From here on out, it will be flawless execution. And um, I apologize for what happened. And now I'm going to let it be, and we're going to move on. Peppermint. Now, uh, let me start off by pointing out this hat. Uh, this is a hat that represents my, my baseball team, the Chicago Cubs. When I say my baseball team, the Chicago Cubs, I mean I was born and raised in the city. Uh, down that way is uh, Wrigley Field, and when I was a kid, uh, we used to walk to Wrigley Field uh, when the Cubs were in town, and the ushers would let us in at the end of the seventh inning stretch, if you can believe that. At the end of the seventh inning stretch, they would say, come on in, kids, and we would all run in and try to get a foul ball. I never got a foul ball in all those years, but uh, we used to run around Wrigley Field. I can't imagine something like that happening today, but that's my team, and um, being a Cubs fan, my whole life has taught me humility. Until recently, they couldn't win. Um, a World Series was unheard of, um, but they did it. And um, uh, that taught me a lot. And um, I wear this hat because today we're talking about integrity. And uh, this is my heart right here. This is my heart. So I'm coming to you from the heart. Now, you notice that I have a sign here that says, be thankful. I try to cultivate certain things in my mindset uh, to try to inspire me to be a good person and to stay positive in my outlook. So I'm doing this in front of my Be Thankful uh, picture and uh, the cross I have over here. My mother named me Christopher for a reason. I was uh, raised Christian. We did meander into some different churches of, of, of some interesting experiences there. I'm, uh, I'm one-eighth Jewish, but I was raised pretty much Catholic. Catholic. And I, and I mention this to you because I come to the topic of integrity as a sinner. I, um, I don't want to give you my confession. <laughs> Speaking of confessions, I'll give you a sin. When I was a kid, growing up with my brothers and sisters, my mother used to take us to confession every week in, in, Catholic, uh, in the Catholic uh, religion. Uh, you know, there's a there's a process you go through to achieve redemption, and the first thing you have to do is uh, you know, identify and then articulate out loud your sins to a priest in the confession. And my mother took us every week, which was a bit of a problem uh, because my nickname was Christopher Good. I was a good kid, you know, so I I didn't have a lot of sins. I, I, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm a 12 years old. Like, what did I do? You know, but she took us every week and. I ended up, most of the time, confessing my thoughts. Uh, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been one week since my last confession. Uh, impure thoughts happened again this week. And the priest, um, we always ended up with this guy. His name was Father Dolan. A tough Irish Catholic Chicago priest. I mean, tough guy, you know. When he was up there giving a sermon, he let everybody have it. I mean, he expressed, uh, I guess what he perceived to be God's anger. I mean, he was... You know, he was righteous and angry, and uh, he was in the, he's in the confession booth every week. I got to tell this guy my sins, impure thoughts, and then he wanted more detail. And um, you know, I talk about whatever violence toward one of my brothers or uh, this French teacher I had or whatever. And um, he's saying you got to do better, discipline your mind. There's no excuse for this every week. You come in with these thoughts, you know. Like, so. I got kind of tired of getting yelled at for having thoughts, and I don't know why, I don't know how it happened, just I was in the confession booth one day, and uh, it's been one week since my confession, impure thoughts, and I thought I'd give him some meat, you know? 
So I made up a sin. I didn't actually do it, but I told him that I lied. Forget about it. He was, he was set off the charts because now he had a real tangible sin. And of course, I didn't lie. I just lied to him in the confessional booth about lying. So, of course, he asked me questions. And so I had to spin this yarn in the confessional booth about a lie I never told but was telling now. And um, I was in there for a long time. I mean, he went off on a whole... He went off on a whole freaking dissertation on lying. And by the time I came out, my brothers and sisters had all finished. They, everybody's ready to go. And I come out and go say my little prayers. And uh, they were looking at me funny, like, what did he do? I remember the next day we went to, to Mass, the Catholic Church. And I learned in catechism that if you um, participate in the communion, with a mortal sin, you void the communion for the rest of the congregation. And the Catholic belief is that if you die with a mortal sin, you don't go to heaven. You go to purgatory. And you gotta you gotta do a little time before you get admitted into heaven. So I was really stressed out about this because I knew, I mean, it must be, you know, the, the venial sins, which are misdemeanors, and you have mortal sins, which are felonies. And so I, I, I was thinking to myself, is it a felony sin? Is it a, is it a mortal sin to lie in confession? And I couldn't decide. So I ended up not doing the communion that day. You know, my mother was really like, why didn't you take communion? I said, I just, I just didn't feel like it. <laughs> it was a disaster. So I lied about lying in confession as, as a, as a, as, a, uh, as, a, as an adolescent. So think about what I could do now if I set my mind to it. I try to be a good person, you know, but I do come to the topic of integrity as a sinner. I'm speaking from the heart here. I also come to the topic as your equal. I, I am a weirdo. I am inspired by, you know, uh, things like the preamble to the Declaration of Independence in the United States. I may have mentioned it earlier in a, in a meeting. Um, we hold these truths to be self-evident. Now, what that means is, if, if you don't get, this is a letter written to the King of England. Uh, we hold these truths to be self-evident. Meaning, if you don't get it, we can't explain it to you. You got it, you, you know, it's obvious. It goes up. All men are created equal. They meant white men who own property. However, we've evolved and we understand this now to mean humans. We're all equal. Um, specifically, in, according to the book, uh, in a very thoughtful analysis, a book called The Moral Sense by James Q. Wilson, he argues that um, that phrase, we're all created equal, specifically refers to our capacity for moral reasoning. And to the king, of course, this is a huge insult. The king, because of the king's blood, uh, has the authority to make laws that we all have to follow or, you know, off with his head. You know, so these, these rebels who founded this country, uh, you know, basically gave the, you know, read between the lines to the king um, when they said, we hold these truths to be self-evident that we're all created equal and endowed by our creator with certain inalienable, inalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Beautiful. This is beautiful. Um, but in this course, when we talk about integrity and ethics, I'm here to say, from the heart, I'm a sinner, and I'm your equal. Your ability to judge right and wrong and good and bad is equal to mine. So I'm not a guru. I'm not trying to tell you how to live your life. I'm trying to give you some tools so you can figure it out for yourself. Now, the first step in this process is integrity. And I'm going to give you three answers to the question, what is integrity? And I'll tell you where they come from. Integrity, in the first uh, case, has to do with authenticity. There's a, there was a former CEO by the name of William George who wrote a book, Authentic Leadership. Uh, and he, I think, makes in that book a compelling argument 
that in order to be a person with integrity, you've got to be true to yourself. Uh, we don't like fake as followers. of. We want our leaders to be real. And uh, you have to be real in the sense of who you are. Uh, you have to be real in the sense of your strengths and weaknesses. You have to be real when you make a mistake. You have to admit your mistake. Um, as long as you don't make the same mistake over and over again, if you ask for it, you might get forgiveness. But you got to be real. Besides, when you do make a mistake, by the way, everybody on the team already knows about your mistake. So really, you're just showing them honesty. But simple common sense honesty, keeping it real, being authentic is the first notion of integrity. The second notion of integrity comes from Scottish moral philosophers like Adam Smith. And the idea is that you should do no harm. You want to live your way, you live your life in a way that doesn't produce harm. The key concept here is interdependence. What happens to you depends on what I do. What happens to me depends on what you do. And we don't want to harm each other. We're interdependent. You know, you wear a mask because we're interdependent and you don't want to harm everybody. If you might be sick and asymptomatic, you know, so I think that's, that's an example. The third notion of integrity may have other sources, but I learned it from uh, Pope uh, John Paul II, uh, who was Pope of the Catholic Church, uh, in a speech he gave. And uh, this is not a religious class. I'm not about a religious experience for you. But I think this is a pretty thoughtful notion of integrity, which is not really theology. It is philosophy. So I'll share it with you. And this notion has to do with principles. You have to to be a leader with integrity, you have to define for yourself some guiding principles. And I'm not here to do that for you. I'm here to ask you to consider in your role as leaders and that you are, that you have to define for yourself some principles and try to live by those principles. Now, according to John Paul II, integrity is the gap, the distance between the principles you define for yourself and how you actually live. That distance is, a, is an index of integrity. And if you achieve moral greatness, you would have no gap between the principles you articulate and how you live your life. Another way to put it is beliefs are fundamentally assertions that something is true. Values are fundamentally assertions that something is good. Behavior is what we do. That is a quote from uh, one of the uh, psychologists I learned a lot from uh, at the University of Illinois, uh, Patrick Laughlin. Beliefs are fundamentally assertions of what we do. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Beliefs are fundamentally assertions of what is true. Values are fundamentally assertions of what is good. And Laughlin went on to say, behavior is what we do. And he said, a person, and Laughlin said this, uh, who was a trained as a Jesuit, uh, Integrity is reducing the gap between our beliefs and our values and what we do. So three notions of integrity. Number one, authenticity. Be true to yourself. Number two, do no harm. It's almost like Google, don't be evil. Do no harm. I like Adam Smith's take on it better than um, the, the Google take. And then number three, Define yourself some principles and, and live by them the best that you can. And uh, reduce that distance between your ideal principles and your actual behavior. So there you go, integrity. Uh, we're gonna break for a minute uh, for you to um, uh, break into groups and I'll give you something to talk about.